Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, thanks for joining me in this video. We're solving logarithmic equations. In the last few videos, we've been looking at how you can look at the way the logarithmic equation is written and find equal expressions. Well, in this video and the following one, we're going to be able to write a quadratic equation to solve. Don't forget these things that I mentioned earlier that if you have log base A of one expression equals log base A of another expression, those will be equal expressions. And we can set them equal to each other and hopefully solve the equation. Okay, and coming up we'll be able to go from log logarithmic form to exponential form. And that's a key also to be able to solve some of these logarithmic equations. Now these two problems I'm going to show you, numbers 5 and 6, will result in a quadratic equation. Okay, and as you may know from algebra, hopefully, sometimes that means no solution, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two. All right, so let's give it a try. Pause this video and come on back. As always, let's make sure the bases are the same. Yes, log base 14 there and log base 14 there. That means that these two expressions are equal to each other, so there is our equation. 2k squared plus 2k equals 24 plus k squared. All right, now let's get everything over on one side, set it equal to zero. All right, hopefully you can see how I've rearranged things here, but we should get k squared plus 2k minus 24 equals zero. Now we set it equal to zero because, of course, the first thing we want to try is try to factor it. Now if we can't factor it or just can't quite figure that out, then we can use the quadratic formula or complete the square, that type of thing. But let's see. I believe that factors of 24 are 6 and 4. And I notice that it's a negative 24, so 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. That means we're going to be doing some subtracting. Yeah, they're two apart. And let's make that 6 positive. So we're going to have k plus 6, k minus 4. And take a moment, use the FOIL method, make sure that you've got it correctly factored. Now, of course, in this situation, this binomial could equal 0. So set that equal to 0, and that gives us our negative 6 answer. And k minus 4 binomial could equal 0, which means k would be positive 4. Now it so happens that both of these work, but just a word of caution here. When you substitute both of those in there, make sure you don't get inside this parentheses a negative value. Remember that logarithms of any base with a negative expression there just do not make sense, and there's no solution if that happens. So always factor it, find your numbers, uh, sometimes up to two answers, but plug it in and make sure. And it so happens that both of these will be positive values here. So there you go. Positive 4, negative 6. Now, number 6, shift gears here a little bit. The answer is positive 3. There's only one solution, and here's why. We have the same base here, log 7, log 7. So that expression is going to be equal to that expression, and it gives us this starting equation. That's a quadratic, so let's get everything over on one side. So I'm going to add 3n squared over here, add 3n squared over here. I'm going to subtract 30 and subtract 30, and I've left a little space here because we're going to have three terms on that side. Those give me 0, and here's my new equation. n squared plus 7n minus 30 equals 0. And I'm going to factor that and try that first. Um, factors of 30, how about um, 6 and 5 or 3 and 10? I'm going to use 3 and 10. I'm going to make the 10 positive and the 3 negative. And that will give me 10n minus 3n when I use FOIL there. 
So the signs work out properly and that gives me a, an answer of negative 10 and positive 3, right? We set each of those binomials equal to 0. And so we have two possible answers here. And as I mentioned in the previous problem, double check. If I put negative 10 in there, I'm going to get negative 200 right there, aren't I? Negative 200 plus negative 70. Okay, it just so happens I can't take a log of a negative value in, inside of there. So that doesn't make sense in that binomial and probably in this binomial too. Let's see, 3 times um, negative 10 squared would be 100. So that's 30 take away 300, right. So that value out of the 2 we got from factoring does not make sense. So 3, positive 3 is the only possible answer. All right, try the next video. It's problem set two. Good luck. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.